Hi guys and welcome to today's video on determining transformations. Yes, you are here to watch this video dealing with dilations, translations, reflections and all that jazz. Doing this video over here for Australia, but it's also relevant to every single maths course around the world. Who am I? I'm Maths Guru, uh, otherwise known as Darren, and it is just me sitting in a room talking to myself, trying to record as much maths content as I can for you guys out there that hopefully makes sense. I'm a small person doing a big job. So if you can and you are new, can you do me a favor and subscribe by clicking that red arrow over there. It lets me know you are watching. It also really, really helps me make more videos. So thank you very much. Now, as I say, we're trying to deal with things here about, well, We've dealt with videos before that have actually given transformations. We've had to sketch them. We've had to sort of create equations from them. But what if they actually give me a start equation and an end equation and say, you list the transformations? Now, there are interestingly lots and lots of ways of being able to do this. That's good. It's maths. That's what we normally do. But in many cases, we teach you how to do stuff forwards, but we're not very good at teaching you how to do stuff backwards. And that sadly is where exams probably put all of their stuff. So I'm going to sort of teach you a bit today about the backward stuff and hopefully you'll remember and be able to apply it. Okay, so the first example we're going to do is fairly standard. We take a y equals x cubed, a squared graph, and we're going to move it to some sort of function. The reason I'm doing you this is to remind you of how we do it and also to talk about what we're doing in relation to the math. So we've got the function y is equal to x squared and we're trying to work out what dilations, reflections and translations will turn it into x plus 3 squared minus 2. So 3 lots of x plus 3 or squared minus 2. Now some of you out there will be able to look at this and straight away go, yeah, I can do this, it's easy, it's a 3 from here and it's a 3 that way and it's a 2 down and job done, move on. Awesome. Remember, this is a fairly simple example, and I'm using it to try and show you how the algebra works. Now, as I said, I'm going to do this using algebra. And the whole point of this is that this is my original function, and this is my image. And we know that an image has coordinates in expressed as x dashed and y dashed. That's the trick to all of this. So I'm going to actually change my y and x in that equation for y dashed and x dashed. So that becomes x dashed plus 3, all squared, minus 2. Now, why are we trying to do this? Because we're trying to work out how to get it to equate or match as closely as possible to y equals x squared. Why? Well, because, again, we know our original graph has coordinates that we can call x, y. And we've known from previous videos that we can do some sort of algebra so that when we're dilating 3 from the x-axis we're timesing our y by 3. When we're doing 2 down we take 2 away. When we're moving across our x-axis in a positive direction we add 3. So what we're really trying to do is build up this algebra that goes inside those brackets. It helps us list what our transformations are. But we remember that that's also x dashed and y dashed. So as we've done before we're looking for ways of sort of uh, equating x dashed and y dashed and x's and y's. So here we go. I am trying to make this, remember, look as close as I can to y equals x squared. So I'm going to move everything that's not directly inside that brackets to the other side. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides to give me y plus 2 is equal to 3 lots. Oh, don't forget the dashed. x dashed plus 3 all squared. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So you get y dashed plus 2 on 3 is equal to x dashed plus 3, all squared. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's as close as I can possibly make it to y is equal to x squared. And the reason we're doing this, if you remember, is we're trying to equate y with something there and our value of x with something inside those brackets because the squared is there, the x is inside that bracket. Brilliant! So I now know that y is equal to y dashed plus 2 all on 3, and x is equal to x dashed plus 3. And again, why are we doing this? Well, we want to get x dashed on its own and y dashed on its own so that we can write it inside those brackets to make the transformations easy to read. So multiply by 3 gives me 3y is equal to y dashed plus 2. And then take away 2 from both sides gives me y dashed. And so x dashed nicely is going to be equal to x minus 3. And now we've got all the information I need because I can say y dash is now equal to 3y 
minus 2 and x dash is equal to x minus 3. What does that have to do with the price of fish? Well, pretty much everything. Now, we said at the beginning that the chances are if we were good, we'd be able to read that straight away as a dilation of factor 3 away from the x-axis, a shift of 3 units to the positive, and a shift of, oh, it wasn't the positive though, was it? No, 3 to the negative. Good, that positive is the opposite. And 2 down. Is that what this here says? Well, yes, because that 3 is connected to the y. So it says make the y's values 3 times bigger. Oh, there we go. And what have we got here? Shift it 3 units to the left. Congratulations. And 2 units down. So putting it in this format actually can help me. How do we then have to write this? Well, we have to write it in the actual way that the exam is telling us. So I'm just going to move this down a moment so I can write x minus 3. 3y minus 2, just so I can remember it. And the wording we use in methods is quite, quite important. So we have to start with dilations, reflections, and translations. So dilation, a dilation of factor 3 from which axis? Yep, the x-axis. Tick, first one, thank you very much. There are actually no reflections. So now I say a translation. This is the long one. Translation of three units in the negative direction. Oh, my handwriting is shocking. Of the x-axis. All of those words are needed. And lastly, a translation of two units in the negative direction. of the y-axis. Okay, happy with that? And that's literally it. Write that down and the chances are you'll get two, three marks in some sort of an exam. And that's the process we're gonna use pretty much every single time. Look at this example here. We're doing it what is seemingly backwards, but the process is actually the same. So here's my original function. y is equal to four on x minus two squared plus six. And we're trying to get that to y equals one on x squared. Well, this is now my original. And this one here is my image. And wherever I see an image, I'm going to write the dashed. So I've got y dashed and x dashed there. What I'm going to do now is I've got to try and look one of the equations look like the other one. Well, I can't make this look like anything. So it actually makes more sense in this case to switch that around to make it look more like my function. So I'm going to minus 6 from both sides. I get y minus 6 is equal to 4 on x minus 2 all squared, and then divide both sides by 4. So we get y minus 6 all on 4 is 1 on x minus 2 all squared. And if we remember, we are trying to compare that with y dashed is equal to 1 on x dashed all squared. Now that dashed and squared makes it look like a 12. Notation, we have to be very, very careful here. Why are we trying to do this? Well, we're trying to equate those, and in this situation, x dashed and that x minus 2. Tick. Right, so we have y dashed is equal to y minus 6 on 4, and we have x dashed is equal to x minus 2. Now, do we need to rearrange things here for x and y? No. Why is that the case? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if you remember, we had x, y was being mapped onto some sort of algebra that was equal to x dashed and y dashed, and we already have x dashed and y dashed. So that's equal to x dashed and y dashed. So all I need to do now is put these equations in to that. I don't need to rearrange them. So x dashed was x minus 2. And I'm going to rewrite this as y on 4 minus 6 on 4. Now the reason we're doing this is because we have to make sure we do our dilations followed by reflections followed by translations. In the form you see here, not very helpful to us. And I'm going to make sure that 6 on 4 becomes 3 on 2 because in methods we need to make sure that we cancel down. Okay, so having done that, can I now read off my information? Well, yes, absolutely. What it's telling us me, to, what it is telling us me, what it is telling me is that to be able to go from my original back to that 1 on x squared, I need to do a dilation of factor of 1 quarter away from the x-axis. Yes, because it's the y value that's changing. So if the y value is changing, it's the x-axis. Then what do we do? A 
translation of two units to the left and down by three on two. And that will reverse, that will take that original graph. So again, if we were writing this out longhand, I'd have to do my dilation. Factor one quarter from the x-axis. There are no reflections, and again, a translation of, what did we say, two units uh, in the negative direction. So translation of two units in the negative direction of the x-axis. And again, excuse my shorthand, you would write it longer. And then a translation of three on two units in the negative direction of the y-axis. Yay, this stuff is awesome. Now, people have asked me for more examples, and here we are. We'll just fly through these really, really quickly because I don't want to blow out the video, but this stuff is super, super important. So once again, we've got y is equal to brackets, 5x minus one all squared plus six, and we're trying to go to the graph of y equals x squared. Which is my original? This one here. Which is my image? This one here. So I'm gonna put the dashes in my image, and I am good to go. We're trying to make one of them look like the other, and this is the one that's gonna be easiest to change. And it's so simple, because actually I'm just gonna take away six from both sides. See what's happened there? I don't need to do anything else because that's now lovely. Y dashed is equal to X dashed all squared. I'll put them in brackets just to make it a little bit easier. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I know that Y dashed is equal to Y minus six, and X dashed is equal to five X minus one. And so filling in my algebra, I get five X minus one and Y minus six. And now I interpret that. So interpreting it, what does it actually tell me? Okay, well, dilations first. Well, here's my dilation. In this situation, I have a dilation. Factor five, but from where? Well, because it's changing the X values, it must be from the Y axis. So from Y axis, and then, wonderful, we have translations. And I'm not gonna write the long hand now, but we'd have a translation to the left one unit and a translation down six units as well. You would write that in longhand, but it's so repetitive now. Okay, this example I've already done previously up in that video, but there is another way of doing it. Now again, I taught this to my guys today, and if you're watching this video, wow, I'm sorry, should have done it the algebra way, but mm, Chinese tea, fabulous, 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 good for the throat. But there is another way of doing this, and, and this is where life gets really funky. We have y is equal to four, on x minus two all squared minus six, and we're trying to turn it into y on one on x squared. Now the first thing we need to do then is actually get rid of this four. And how am I gonna get rid of that four? Well, believe it or not, I need to change my y value here, and it's going to seem really bizarre. But what I need to do is I need to make that y equal to four y. Now the reason I'm gonna do it, because four cancels there, four cancels there, and that becomes six on four. But how do I turn this y into four y using transformations? Well, if you remember, when we replace y, we have to replace it with y on a, where a is my scale factor. And how do I make y turn into four y when I've got an a on the bottom? Well, that's actually the same as y on one quarter. See, many of you are watching this and already going, I have no idea what you're talking about. I know, random to do it this way, but anyway. So that now explains why I've got this 4y here. And if we now realize we've got one on x minus two all squared minus six on four, what do I do now? Well, we now have realized that we need to do a dilation of factor a quarter away from the x-axis. Yep, because the y values are changing. So we already knew that, now what do I do? I look at my translations. Well, this one here is nice and easy. We now know that to be able to undo that six on four, then I would need to move it up by six on four. Yes, because obviously we're trying to get rid of that. And what about this X minus two? Well, what that's actually saying is that this whole graph, which happens to be some sort of a truncus, is actually split on two here. And so to turn it back, we would have to move it to the left too. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if that made sense to you, then what we need is we need a dilation 
factor a quarter from the x-axis, we need a translation of two units to the left and a translation of three on two units vertically to get it back to where it was. Now, if you understood that much respect, some people can just literally look at these things and go, well, okay, I knew I had y was equal to four on x minus two squared minus six, if I remember rightly, uh, brain's going, yes. And some people can literally look at that and go, ah, oh, yeah, that's fine, a quarter will get rid of the four and I'll change the, I, mine goes. My view on all of this, to be perfectly honest with you, is that that algebra that I've shown you, generally speaking, if you structure it the way I've done there, you can't go wrong. And it's so much easier to do that. If you want to do it the other way, much respect. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of this determining transformations for this methods three and four video. And it is so good having you here. If you can do me the honor in just a moment, a circle will come up and allow you to subscribe again. If you can actually point out to your friends and let them know that these videos here, greatly appreciated. Leave a comment below if you can. So there, over there, ladies and gentlemen, is that circle. And appearing just below it is the video of this series, another one that might be useful to you. Thanks very much for watching. Really good to see you. Hope to see you again. Mouse Guru, out.